Welcome back to Noir Alley, your weekly foray through the darker side of classic cinema. I'm your host, Eddie Muller. This weekend, I'm bringing you a little-known picture from 1951 called No Questions Asked, starring Barry Sullivan, Arlene Dahl, and Gene Hagen. These stars, plus the usual MGM gloss, make a nervous A out of what was clearly budgeted as a B picture. Now, last week on Noir Alley, we presented Crossfire, a Best Picture nominee from 1947, the first film made at RKO under the auspices of executive producer Dory Sherry. Now, prior to joining RKO, Sherry had spent several years running the B Picture unit at MGM. He'd returned to the studio in 1948, choosing to work once more under Louis B. Mayer instead of RKO's new boss, Howard Hughes. But it wasn't a happy reunion. Mayer and Sherry had entirely different production philosophies and diametrically opposed taste. Mayer favored the cheerful, uplifting movies the Tiffany studio had become famous for, while Sherry, fresh off the success of Crossfire, leaned toward lower-budget, harder-hitting fare. With Sherry as chief of production, MGM was suddenly awash in noir. Side Street, Order Incident, Tension, Scene of the Crime, Mystery Street, The Bribe, and the cream of the crop, 1950s, The Asphalt Jungle, which Mayer hated, despite its immense critical acclaim. MGM still made trademark products like On the Town, Father of the Bride, and Royal Wedding, but the meter was running out on the reign of Louis B. Mayer. Today's selection, No Questions Asked, was produced by Nicholas Nafak, a Sherry comrade, who happened to be the nephew of Nicholas Skank, president of Lowe's Incorporated, MGM's parent company. It was really the Skank, Sherry, Nafak combination that proved to be Mayer's downfall. In late 1951, the one-time king of Hollywood was given the boot by the board of Lowe's Incorporated, led by Nick Skank. Dory Sherry was immediately installed as the studio's VP of production. Nick Nafak had bought the original story for No Questions Asked from freelance writer Bernie Geiler, an idea man with only a few features under his belt. There wouldn't be many more. In 1953, he moved almost exclusively to television, where he turned out scripts for weekly shows like Cheyenne and The Man from U.N.C.L.E. The final screenplay, on the other hand, was by a guy who'd been writing movies since 1941 and who would much later have a second career as a best-selling novelist, Sidney Sheldon. He'd worked on many of MGM's ritziest musicals, Easter Parade, Nancy Goes to Rio, and Annie Get Your Gun. But with this assignment, he seemed happy to be mucking around in the sordid world of insurance scams and writing smart-mouthed and cynical dialogue that would never have come from the mouths of Jane Powell, Howard Keel, or Betty Hutton. Sheldon concocts some amusing twists along the way that are the movie's unexpected highlights. And these scenes show how refreshing it can be when an essentially comedic writer takes a crack at noir. Assigned to direct was Harold F. Cress, with his previous picture, a Western featuring Lassie called The Painted Hills, Cress had been promoted from the editing department to the director's chair. He does a competent job, but apparently the move didn't suit him. He only directed one more picture, a B-Western, Apache War Smoke, before returning to the editing room permanently. In the 1950s, he'd cut such films as I'll Cry Tomorrow, The Tea House of the August Moon, and Silk Stockings. He won an Oscar for 1963's How the West Was Won, and a second for The Towering Inferno in 1974. He reunited with the screenwriter of No Questions Asked, in 1977, when he edited the film adaptation of Sidney Sheldon's best-selling potboiler, The Other Side of Midnight. Now, nobody ever mentions Barry Sullivan among the leading actors in noir, but the guy made at least a dozen movies that could qualify as examples of the form. And if he didn't have the compelling energy of Richard Widmark or Robert Ryan, or the laconic coolness of Robert Mitchum, he was dependable enough to maintain a 50-year career in a fickle business. My boys are getting hurt. They don't like you, Kiva. And neither do I. 
Thanks. I won't enter any popularity contests. Here he has the good fortune of appearing with two of MGM's brightest stars, Gene Hagen and Arlene Dahl, who just standing up straight could make any man go crooked. Now, escaping from the crossfire of the feud between Louis B. Mayer and Dory Sherry, here is No Questions Asked. 